Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Oh, Jesus, that took a lot of energy right there. You're probably like, Bill, geez, you sounded so fucking old the past couple of weeks, kid. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Old Freckles is off the road. Yes, the old fucking cunt. He ain't what he used to be. Ain't what he used to be. Ain't going to LAX. I love it. I ain't doing fucking shit. So don't fucking call me. I'll tell you right. I, if I had the fuck, if, if, if we weren't in a never ending 17 fucking wars right now and they weren't fucking taking such a giant fucking, I, I literally give these cunts more than I make and I did the fucking job. Huh? Uncle Sam going on stage telling any fucking jokes. Huh? The big, he's like a fucking character comic. That's what he would be. This big stupid fucking hack, you know, going up there. So he's on a fucking unicycle. I want you. Yeah, I want you to go fuck yourself. How about that, Sammy? How about I get to keep just a little, just how about a cunt hair more? Sorry. Anyways, what am I thankful for this weekend? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, dude. If, if, there was a, if there was a fucking way that I could figure out, if I could figure out how to get off the fucking hamster wheel, you know, because the deal is, it's like you keep running or we're just going to tax the shit out of you. You want to put your fucking money on the c- crap table? We'll give you a little break. You know, but if you ha- well, like, the second you start slowing down, you know, the government's just like, wait, does this motherfucker think he's going to retire? He's just going to coast. You're going to get in that fucking car and you're going to work, you fucking piece of shit. And you're going to fucking work and then we're going to take more than you fucking make. Huh? You fucking like that? Hey, smarten up. That's what they should do. Just come in like that fucking guy there in the casino. Smarten up. Everybody take your head and I stick it through that fucking hole. That's basically their vibe. So anyways, I figured out how to retire. I saw it today and I was walking out of the grocery store. I saw this guy had a Ford F-150 with the camper on the back. And I'm like, that's it right there. They'll let you do that. All right, you don't want to work? Then you got to live like that, all right, you cunt? And we're still going to give you tickets. And eventually we're going to tow your house away. (laughs) Hey, if you were in that situation, if they show up, can you take the camper off the back and then they just take the truck? You know you probably couldn't. Well, yeah, uh, you you, you can't keep your camper right here. You're going to have to move that. And he fucking, you're getting underneath it. Like those old school guys that put the refrigerators on their back and you got to fucking start traipsing down the street. You know, then you set it up. And then some douche with a house like me is just like, um, have you seen the guy down the street with the camper? I don't want that in my neighborhood. Um, anyways, what I'm trying to say is I really enjoy time off. Been having a great time just hanging with my daughter, hanging with my wife. Threw down yesterday, you know, all the relatives came over, everybody fucking ate, but old freckles, I didn't go too hard. Didn't go too hard, I stayed away from the desserts, you know, I, uh, I did pretty good. Then this morning I woke up, I had my little parfait, butter, right? I had the fucking, uh, you know, little bit of Greek yogurt with the fruit in there, like the big fruit cake that I am, and then I had a uh, little hummus wrap for lunch. In between, I'm having fruit with nuts. You know, these holidays ain't getting me this year. Finally figured it out after 50 fucking holidays. Finally figured it out. Ah, oh, this is the problem. I got to go easy. I got to go easy this Thanksgiving weekend, all right? I had my Thanksgiving dinner. I had it, you know, around three in the afternoon. I was halfway through the plate and I was already leaning. Oh, it was good. Oh, it was delicious. And... um you know, you put your plate together. I'm not, I hate those fucking people. It's like, I, I can't have my food touch other food. You know? The only thing worse than the person saying that is the fucking meathead across the table. Why? It's just all going to be mixed up in your stomach. Right? Both of those people should get in a car and drive off a cliff. No, come on, Bill. You should give thanks for both of them. Anyways, I don't give a fuck about that. But I will say this. When you put together... Your Thanksgiving plate. This is how it has to. This is how I do it. 
All right? <laughs> About 4 o'clock, you got your turkey. Okay? 3 o'clock, you got your potatoes. That way you can put the gravy on both. All right? And then at, at, at 5 o'clock, you know, you want your... Uh, let me move those all up an hour. I'd say 5 o'clock is the turkey. 4 o'clock is the mashed potatoes. 6 o'clock is your cranberry sauce. You know, gives it a little nice little sweet kick with the gravy and the turkey. Get your potatoes in there. It's good. The fucking vegetable, you know, that somebody made that you just try to make them feel good. You know, yeah, that shit all goes up around 12 noon. That shit that you're going to be like, fuck, I still got two more mouthfuls of that. All of that shit's up top. That casserole thing that your fucking aunt makes, you know. Make sure you get some casserole. <laughs> you're sitting there with your fucking itchy sweater, right? Then uh, what do I got? What else is left? Then you get whatever's like the sweet shit I keep around, you know, that's around 11 o'clock. Somebody made some yams or something like that. Sweet potatoes or some bullshit like that. You put that up there. And then you got your bread somewhere around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. You know what I mean? And then right in the middle, I don't know what else. That's some other fucking thing. You just stick right in the middle. Oh, uh, and then you just, you just, you eat it like the way you tune a snare drum. <laughs> Any drummers out there, if you know the, the, whatever, there's a million different patterns, but that's basically the way you do it. Um, and I want to just take some time here to say how bad I feel for people who don't live in the United States of America. So you don't have this holiday where you can sit down and eat way more than you fucking chat. Um, oh, it's great. Thanksgiving's fucking awesome. And because you know why? Because then you got the Friday off. To just lay around, you know, with your belly poking out of the bottom of your fucking sweater that you passed out in, you know. Um, I actually, you know, I actually uh, was, had to, like, I'm one of these lunatics where I'm just like, I try to, like, make sure everything fucking gets on the table. It's all hot. It's all ready to go. And I finally realized this year, it's just like, there's just too many fucking people cooking. It's just going to come the way it goes or whatever. And then I realized anything that needs to be hot, you just put gravy on it, it's going to fucking heat it up again. And it was probably the best Thanksgiving I've had in years. But what's great is the Friday after. The Friday after, like today. You don't have to go to work, hopefully. You know? You get to lounge around, you know? Bleary-eyed from whatever the fuck you did the night before. And then tomorrow you got all the college football games. What do we got? What do we got tomorrow? Come on, people. You got Michigan. Ohio State to kick off the day. You got Alabama versus Auburn. Which it's probably not going to be a good game this year, but, you know, who knows? If Auburn wins that, I mean, Jesus Christ, they, they'd be going fucking nuts. I mean, tomorrow is the day. You're not a man tomorrow unless you're ignoring your family, okay? That's the level of football. That's, I'm kidding. But I got my kid. You heard my kiddo. She says it now. She goes, football, football. Ball. Now she wants. Now she wants it to be on the TV. I'm fucking. I'm steering her away from. Uh, she always wants to see uh, Minnie Mouse. She goes Mimi Mao, Mimi Mao. Sounds like she's in uh, Mimi Mao, Mimi Mao. Like what's that? What's that? The Deer Hunter. Mao, Mao, right? Mimi Mao, Mimi Mao. No, Minnie Mouse went to sleep. Mimi Mao. Um. Have I lost my mind? What the fuck am I talking about? I don't know. I have no idea. How much time have I done? Eight minutes and 45 seconds. Jesus Christ. Some days, you know, this podcast flies by, and then other days, feels like I did eight hours and 45 minutes. Um, yeah, Michigan, Ohio State. Michigan, they got to get it done. I can't believe this is already the fifth fucking time they've played Ohio State with Jim Harbaugh, unless I'm wrong. I have no idea, um, but it's going to be a great game. I like Big Ten football. It's, you know, it's old school football. You know, they actually run the fucking ball. I got to tell you, that shit, and I don't want to be a grumpy old man here. Um, that fucking game Monday night, Kansas City versus the Rams, the amount of people that were freaking out, that was like the most unbelievable game I've ever seen. That game was a shit show. That game reminded me of the Super Bowl last year. And I think that that's basically the direction NFL football is going in, where there's just going to be no fucking defense. And uh, my favorite thing about me saying there's no defense, that people are like, oh, excuse me, uh, there was three defensive scores. Um, 
Yeah, that, that's just like that's just like last year. Last year in the Super Bowl. Oh, excuse me, there was a fumble that won the fucking game. It's like the fucking Rams gave up almost 500 yards fucking passing. There was almost a th- in six touchdowns. The guy threw for six touchdowns and fucking 500 fucking yards, basically. There was a total of like 10 passing touchdowns. It was over almost 1,000 yards. I think they went over 1,000 yards combined. It was a fucking joke. And then everybody's saying to me, like, oh, Bill, you know what you're talking about? You're just worried about your Patriots, which is hilarious. My Patriots have been thriving during this era. We haven't had a fucking defense since 2004. A lights out, win the game, 20 to 17 defense. We haven't. We've had to fucking score like 35 fucking points to win a goddamn game since forever. Um, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to sit there and act like this is just me. Dude, Richard Sherman was tweeting about it. Another guy on the uh, uh, fucking Texans. And even Teddy Bruschi. Actually, I actually saved his. I did a screenshot shot of what he He basically said. The way the game is now. Richard Sherman was like, all they, all they want to see is points. Because what that does is that gets the casual fan and the people that don't understand football who said, that was, that was fucking unbelievable. I mean, that's what, to be honest with you, if, if soccer ever wanted to make it into America, they should be doing what the NFL has done to their game, which is just, I don't know what, they just took, think about it, every era, right? There's been a Jack Lambert, then there was, was L. Lawrence Taylor. I'm just picking some of the guys I can, I can off the top of my head. A uh, 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 Ray Lewis, you know, Ronnie Lotz, Mike Haynes, Lester Hayes, fucking lunatic, you know, Andre Tippett's just lights out, Bruce Smith's. Like, where are those guys now? There's like maybe three of them, and they're not putting up the fucking stats those guys used to put up. You know, they just... I don't know. These Revis Island, there's just not that guy anymore. They can't, they can't, like those guys wouldn't be that guy today. All right, Bill, shut the fuck up. No, but I'm just, I'm just fucking saying. All right. All right. Here's, here's, here's Teddy Bruschi. Welcome to the new NFL when it comes to defensive football. Former linebacker Teddy Bruschi wrote on Twitter, offense will move the ball and score. That's it. They're going to move the ball and score. You can't do anything about it. He goes, make a handful of plays a game to take the ball away and get your offense a couple of extra possessions. Score on defense is an A+. It hurts to write that. All right? So all you fantasy football playing fucking guy, if you're going to fucking sit there and say I'm wrong about this, then you're saying Teddy Bruschi is wrong. Um, I hate it. I hate it. I hate everything that they've done. I hate that the, 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 there's no two-line pass in hockey anymore. I hate that it's just these stretch passes up and down the fucking rink. Um, it's just a, everything's like, you know what? And I think it's probably because of like smartphones and everybody's fucking looking at all the videos that you, you need to sit there like a fucking, I don't know, a gerbil that forgot its jacket. I'm trying to think of some animal that shakes. I don't know. But don't, don't listen to me. I'm just saying, um, dude. That fucking Mahomes guy is a fucking star, all right? But, you know, they both look like Dan Marino that night, okay? And there's only one fucking Dan Marino. That looked like Dan Marino versus fucking Dan Fouts way back in the day. And those two guys, I mean, I'm not saying they won't eventually be there, but, like, I can't imagine what Marino and Dan Fouts would have done to those in, in, in today's era. I mean, you know, they threw for four, 400 yards a fucking game, three, 400 yards a fucking game back when you could actually cover a receiver. Borderline beat the shit out of him as he's going down. You could fuck up a quarterback. You could sack a quarterback and then, like, actually they'd lose yardage rather than the team with the quarter, the offense, you know, getting a first down because you tackled the guy too fucking hard. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's fucking sissy football. You know, it just, you know, I get it. I get it. People get fucking hurt, but uh, I don't know. Just listening to those fucking announcers going, this is, this is the highest scoring Monday Night Football. And then not even addressing the level that the game has changed. Uh, whatever. It's a fucking show. It's a goddamn show. And I'm an old man, and I said what I said. I'm just going to go to like, I don't know. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to start watching rugby or something. 
Something where the guy with the ball is going to get fucking tackled. I would love to do a podcast and interview some great defensive players and just see what they're thinking about this shit um, and how they think that they would do. It's changed that much. But like I said, there's always, you know, the older generation never likes the new, the new shit. But you got guys now who literally are still playing in the league tweeting saying it's fucked up. So I want to think that I'm right. But whenever I talk like this, I always, there was that NFL films. If anybody can find the clip, please tweet it to me. There was this guy, you know, he was this old school, you know, middle linebacker or something like that. It's like back during uh, the Sam Huff days. And they asked him, uh, hey, what do you think about uh, some of the kids playing football today? And he just goes, I wouldn't watch a football game today if you fit. He almost fucking had a stroke. (laughs) So maybe I'm doing that, but I just. Baseball is still fucking baseball, man. So you got, you know, still got to fucking hit it over the fence. They got rid of the roids, I think. I don't know. But like, uh. The NBA, it's like nobody's allowed to stand underneath. Even on defense, you got to get the fuck out of there and just, I don't know. Guys go in, they start driving from the three-point line and people are just getting the fuck out of them. I love when the guy goes up to dunk and the guy thinks about blocking it. And he's like, oh, I don't want to end up on Instagram. And he tries to kind of duck out of the picture. And then the bench goes nuts and they're waving towels at, at, a, at an uncontested dunk. Um, am I done complaining? I think I am. I think I am. Hey, everybody, the seventh annual Patrice O'Neill Comedy Benefit. Uh, tickets are going fast. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. The lineup, uh, it's going to be, sorry, it's going to be Tuesday, February 19th, 2019 at 7 p.m. at the City Center Theater, 131 West 55th Street, New York, New York, 10019. Uh, the lineup is Big J Okerson. Chris Red, Cypher Sounds, Gary Goldman, Jim Gaffigan, Michelle Wolf, Rich Voss, and yours truly uh, with more names to be announced. Um, we're waiting for people's availabilities and that type of stuff. Like, you know, obviously uh, comics working for free, giving up their free time. So people are trying to work it out with their schedules. But uh, just an overwhelming response. Thank you guys so, so much. Like I, like I said, it's the best thing that I do all year. It's been helping his family incredibly, so thank you so much for that. And with that, the old bald, the old bald freckles, he ain't what he used to be. Um, I miss a lights out defense, huh? That's all I'm saying. Remember the fucking doomsday defense against the steel curtain? You know, the no-name defense, the -the over-the-hill gang, the sack exchange. The 46 defense. and f- How much fun was it to watch the fucking Bears that year? With Wilbur. Marshall! Gary Fensick. Mike Singletary. Richard Dent. I mean, they were, I mean, they were fucking unbelievable. Lights fucking out defense. I don't know why people don't like watching that. You know, a, high, like a high-powered offense against a great defense. Watch that chess match instead of having just like fucking <laughs> free for all. I felt like I was watching somebody play like one of those bar games. You know those people when they throw the basket, the the, the basketball into the basket, and those people get so good they can use either either hand. That's the way they were fucking scoring. We get it, Bill. All right, Helix, everybody. You ever wake up in the morning with regrets of what you've done, replaying the terrible decisions you made the previous night over and over and over? Is this my inner voice? The kicking, sweating, yelling, or whatever else you did to piss everyone in the bedroom off? Well, guess what, bud? Deciding to sleep on a shitty mattress is your choice. Uh, Buying, okay, but Bill, buying a mattress is so hard. Where would I begin? They're literally writing this for me. Um, Well, you're in luck, buddy, because Helix Sleep, the mattress I've been yelling at you to buy for almost two years, will change your life. Just go to helixsleep.com slash burr, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to the perfect mattress. I can't even fucking... My th- How big do I have to make the print? I- I'm one of those guys, I'm never getting glasses. I think glasses are for fucking weak people. Or people that have, are strong enough to admit that they have a problem. I don't know where I am on that side of the fence. I don't know if I'm a hero or if I'm a coward. Um, 
It's like Tinder for finding a mattress. I just said enlarge it. All the fun with, no, uh, with none of the next morning regrets and misery. And right now, you can get up to $125 off your mattress order at helixsleep.com slash burr. They have a 100-night trial. Gross! Free shipping and won't send you creepy next-day texts. That's, that's helixsleep.com slash burr for $125 off your mattress. Helixsleep.com, H-E-L-I-X sleep.com slash burr. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm not getting glasses. I'm just going to wait. Someday when there's an affordable robot, I'll just have that cunt fucking read for me. How vulnerable will I be? You know? Did you see that? Cause, you know, because the thing will be fucking smarter than I am, and then I also I can't see. How soon before that thing fucking brains me with something in the kitchen? Did you guys see that commercial? I think it's for Sprint. You know, with that guy who sold out, who used to be with Verizon. You know, and then they fired him, and then he fucking, you know... He's like the Henry Hill of fucking wireless service. He fucking, you know, he jumps over with Sprint. So they're doing this, this thing where this lady's going to take a picture and she's just talking about how clear it is. And it's three people and a fucking robot for whatever reason. And the lady is so, the lady taking the picture is so fucking blown away by how clear the screen is. She just keeps commenting on it, and she's not taking the picture, and all the people are smiling, going, okay, yeah, it's great, great. And somebody goes, I can't hold my smile much longer. And the other guy goes, I can't hold my smile either. And the robot goes, I can. Right there. You see everything that just fucking happened in that commercial? They made having a robot seem fucking normal to the point you're taking a family fucking photo with it in front of the Grand Canyon. Okay, and then... The human beings, are in, in their own way, are admitting that they're not, they're not as good as the robot. They're getting it in your fucking head that these things are, are just normal and they should be in your fucking life and that, that you're not worthy. You know, that fucking trader from Ver- Verizon, if he wanted to redeem himself, should have grabbed that fucking robot and thrown him right off the cliff. That's all I'm saying. That's how I liked. That's how I would have liked it to end. But I, I mean, no, I, that, that's that's in, that's in a perfect world. All right, legal zoom, everybody. Um, evidently, this podcast is brought to you by LegalZoom.com and the number four. You know the saying, "Time is money." It's true, especially when you run your own business. But running a successful business involves taxes, contracts, hush money, and a whole lot of fine print. Things that eat up too much of your time. Well, it's time to turn to LegalZoom. Over the last 17 years, more than a million Americans have used LegalZoom to help launch their businesses. Businesses it is. But that's only the beginning. LegalZoom has a network of independent attorneys. These guys went rogue, man. They're independent. And tax professionals who can provide you with advice you need to get through the daily grind of running your own business. Uh, and the best part is you don't have to worry about driving to anyone's office or being billed by the hour since LegalZoom isn't a law firm. I don't get how they're not a law firm. You're going to take fucking legal advice from them. You can't count on legal. You can count on LegalZoom to provide the business resources you need and services that fits into your schedule. Invest your time and money into growing your business and let LegalZoom help with the legal stuff. Go to LegalZoom.com now and use the code BURR. B-U-R-R. I yell, I scream when they, it's all in capitals. I yell it. Burr at checkout for special savings. Once again, that's promo code Burr at LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. You know, they were proud of that saying, where life meets legal. I like that. Alliteration. It's quick. It's succinct. It's succinct. It's succulent. Um, anyways, so, uh. I don't know what to name this podcast, but, I, you know, old Billy didn't have his cranberry juice, did he? Huh? Well, Billy's been on the rag here about all the sports. I just want a little bit of defense. That's all. Bill, for fuck's sakes. Okay? It's over. Okay? No more defense. You can't take your dick out at work. And, and uh, I don't know what else. And, and it's called climate change. I get it. Things are changing. I'm getting older. Things are changing. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so I'm having some people over. I invited all these fucking people to come over my house, not realizing that the OSU fucking Michigan game is, starts at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So kind of changes the menu. 
I guess I'll be making some uh, breakfast burritos over there. Um, Jesus Christ, I hope fucking Michigan wins it this year. This this has to become a rivalry again. I wonder what they are all time. I think Michigan had them, and then... And now they just, they, they, Ohio State has gone on such a run. I, I would say that they caught up and passed them. OSU, come on, you cunt. OSU versus Michigan. Anybody watching that kid down there at Duke? Jesus Christ, that man child. Uh, OSU versus Michigan record. Here we go. Maybe that's the one all time. Michigan football rivalry. Do da, do da. All right. Let's see. Early years, the Snow Bowl and Woody Hayes. God knows something crazy happened. Anytime I think I'm angry, I just watch Woody Hayes highlights. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not that bad. I ain't that fucking bad. Ten-year war, Hayes versus Shem, Bo Schembechler. Yeah, until Woody Hayes punched that guy in the fucking under, in the jaw. Remember that? The kid intercepted the ball, and Woody got so fucking mad. It was a kid on the other team. He grabbed him. He punched him. You know, the guy wanted to win. Michigan versus OSU all time head to head year by year. Maybe this will get it for me. Come on, man. Come on, man. All time results. Here we go. Yeah, da 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 built. That's that's the Notre Dame one. I know. They all sound the same to me. All right. Who gives a fuck about way in 1912? All right. Let's let's just look over the last few years. All right. Michigan has not won since 2011. All right. OSU has won one, two, three, four, five, six years in a row. And they've won 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 of the last 14 fucking years. Jesus Christ. Um, wait a minute. 1998 OSU won? Get the fuck out of here. Am I reading these right? I'm not reading this right, am I? Oh, that's ranking. How fucking difficult can this be? Oh, no, no, I'm reading it right. Okay, sorry. Jesus Christ. Are you guys still listening to this? I don't know why people listen to this fucking podcast. This has got to be the most unprofessional thing ever. I, and I thought I went in 1999. I went to um, Ohio State versus Michigan. But Tom Brady played that game, so I wasn't. I went to the one... In 1998. Or was it 97? Because Michigan won the year I went. Did I go in 90? Maybe I went in 97. I don't fucking remember. All right. The 1990s. Michigan, Michigan. It was a tie. Michigan. Ohio State. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. OSU, Michigan. Decade before. 80s. Starting in 1980. Went Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State, Michigan, Ohio State. Michigan, Michigan, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan. Let's see the 70s, the 10-year war. Ohio State, Michigan, Ohio State, tie. Ohio State, Ohio State, Michigan, 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 Ohio State. So wait a second. Ohio State went one, two, three, four, five. Michigan, one, two, three, four, and then the tie. All right. Do they have the all-time? So what is the all-time? Michigan dominated the early years, compiling a 12-0-2 record in a non-conference matchup. Oh, Jesus Christ, look how small this fucking print is. There's no fucking way. All right, now i got to find this fucking thing. This is like to the point I'm forgetting that I'm podcasting right now. Whatever. So you guys, you know, you fucking millennials, you probably already looked this up 58 fucking times. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to figure out. Oh, I took my daughter... The Guitar Center for the first time. The one on Sunset Boulevard, the big one that they um, they redid. It was hilarious. So I took a picture of me and my, my daughter, right, you know, with the Guitar Center logo behind us. And she was reaching for the camera, but it looked like she was doing the rock star point right at the camera. And I'm sitting there cheesing, smiling next to her, so I look like I'm a fan of hers. <laughs> 
it's right now it's my favorite fucking uh it's my favorite goddamn uh picture that I have of her. Uh, by the way, thank you to everybody that signed up to my for my uh, Patreon page. Uh, next week, me and uh, Joey Roses, the teen idol sensation from the Opie and Anthony program, um, the late great Opie and Anthony program, will be uh, will be doing a couple more episodes of Uninformed, yelling at each other and all that type of shit. Uh, I got the free time now. I'm gonna fly the helicopter, get some fucking video for you, and we have exclusive footage from my show at Madison Square Garden. Uh, me doing the sound check, saying I was going to kill. I knew it. I knew I was going to kill. One of those nights you just could feel it. And then in the end, uh, Andrew fucking walked all the way around with me, Joe, and Verzi were all saying goodnight. It follows me all the way through the crowd, all the way into the back green room, and there was another big-time comic there that I had no idea that they were there. Captured that whole fucking conversation. All, so that's, that's the direction my Patreon page is going to go. It's going to be a lot of personal shit like that um, that, you know, I don't mind putting out there for a few people. Try not to do it for a bunch of fucking, you know. I feel like I'll let you in enough with this, my guy. All right, that's the fucking podcast. Enjoy the music, and then there's going to be another half hour of um, content from a Thursday afternoon just before Friday. Monday morning podcast from, I don't know, earlier this year or 10 years ago, whenever the fuck I started doing these things. Uh, I'm pulling for Michigan. I respect Ohio State. I just want it to be a rivalry again, you know. I'd like to see Jim Harbaugh, you know, at this point. I mean, when was the last time his wife had a good Christmas? I mean, come on. You, you, the guy's got to win here, you know. I would think even 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 when they do win, you still got to be like, you know, when he's around the house, you're like, Jimmy, Jimmy, relax, okay? Just, you know, it's breakfast. You know, have, have some toast. <laughs> Where do I get off calling anybody else a fucking lunatic? Oh, you know what I love? I went to the heart doctor. My heart looks great. So right now my chest pains, I know that's just fucking indigestion. What would you do if I fucking keeled over right now? You know what it is? I eat too fast. All right. Now I want all you guys who aren't doctors out there right now to then tell me, you know, the dangers of fucking that. What about this fucking jerk off who goes to that goddamn island in the middle of nowhere and gets his dumb ass killed? He fucking went there one time. He gets shot with the bunch of fucking arrows and then he fucking comes back again only somebody like who's delusional with religion can be that fucking stupid to go over i mean what the what the fuck are you doing jesus christ you know what i love too is everybody assumed it was a fucking white guy myself included i'm like that's that's that there you go that's what the fuck we do hey don't go over there you could get killed oh yeah where is it Let me go check it out. I think the dude was Asian American. I hate that he lost his life, but I am psyched that for once somebody did some dumb white guy shit and it wasn't a dumb white guy. All right? Dumb white guys finishing November strong. Um, I always wonder what my neighbors think when I yell shit like that. I can't tell if he's if he's gone crazy. Is his wife in trouble? We don't know. Oh, by the way, uh, massively positive feedback of Nia reading the questions. So, oh my God, my fucking daughter gave me shit for the first time ever in front of everybody at Thanksgiving. At the Thanksgiving dinner table, she's sitting there and she was being all whiny and everything, you know, demanding and all of this stuff. I go, good Lord. I go, what are you doing over there? What are you, what are you, the boss baby? And she looks at me and she goes, you're the boss baby. And the whole table was, it was like when Spider goes, you know, why don't you go fuck yourself, Tommy? Everybody just went like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I was looking at Nia going like, did she just say that? Did she say you're the boss baby or did she just mumble something? It's, I know she can say boss baby, but she went, you're a boss baby. I was just like, Jesus, God. And now we've entered this chapter. Um, anyways, all right, that, that's it, everybody. I hope you had a lovely uh, Thanksgiving uh, don't be afraid to go for a walk, man. Go for a walk and have some fruit and vegetables. You don't have to fucking do that much damage this weekend. You can still enjoy yourself, but, you know, be, don't be a fucking jerk. All right? Um, I don't know what that meant either. Have a great weekend, you cunts, and I'll check. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah.
Have yourself a happy Thanksgiving. Even if you're a vegetarian cut, just eat your potatoes, stuffing, and that fucking goo. But don't be a douche and say I can't eat the stuffing because it was in the bird. Friends. We here at the Monday Morning Podcast want to extend a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving wish to each and every one of you. And we would also like it if you took time to think of those who are a little less fortunate. That's the only fucking thing I hate about this holiday, right? This is such a great fucking holiday in that... There's no corporate bullshit, right? They can't get you. You, don't, you can't. You don't have to go out and go buy anybody anything. Everybody just makes something to eat. You go over somebody's house and you fucking throw down. And I don't know how, but for some reason, this unbelievable holiday has has remained like corporate free. Like they can't figure out how the fuck to get you to buy something. On a day when it's all about feeding your fucking face. Other than food, obviously. But you know what I mean? They haven't figured out a way to be like, is this the year you stick the ring in the yams? (laughs) Buy her a car on Thanksgiving. You know, God knows it would be all about the fucking broads, right? The fuck are you going to get, huh? Some sort of... What are you going to get, huh? One 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 of those buzzer rings, huh? To make your friends laugh around the water bubbler? That stunk. That was a bad example. You know why? Because I have no fucking example. Because basically, when you're a man, you stop getting good gifts past the age of 12. Once you're too old for toys, that's it. You get clothes. You get bullshit, right? The fucking broads sit there. I want this shiny thing that cost. It only costs six weeks of your pay. Really? Why don't you take this fucking piece of coal, stick it up your hoo-ha, and see what happens in six weeks? If it's shiny, stick it on your finger. If it isn't, shut it. You f- uh, stick it in your fucking pie hole. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry. This is supposed to be about giving thanks. No, so I love this fucking holiday. You know, I like to eat. Hey, who doesn't, right? But every time, they have to still fucking ruin it. One of these, these network douchebags during the Macy's Day Parade when they're sitting there with their network earmuffs and gloves on, right, with the fucking McGruff trench coat. They always have to say, you know, Thanksgiving's such a wonderful time of year and blah, 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 all this shit. You're ready to throw down, and then they got to go at the last second be like, but what about Haiti? And then they get to show a bunch of fucking earthquake victims still trapped under a swing set. You know, it's like, can you just – can I just have one holiday off? Can I do that? So I'm not – all I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the fucking football. Did that make sense? Um, Anyways, hey, am I the only guy who gets creeped out by that fucking eight-legged turkey John Madden has every year? Did he stop doing that because he's retired now? Uh, There was always something a little wrong about that. Or maybe there was a little bit of foreshadowing of what man-made turkeys are going to look like in a few years, right? I mean, they already do that with – with the chickens, don't they? People like white meat, right? So they gave them fucking steroids, and now they can't even walk because their pecs are tipping them over. Did you guys see Food Inc.? Did you see that? Oh, God, this podcast started off with such promise. I don't even know where I am in it right now. Um, anyways, this is the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday. Here we go. Let's get back to some familiar ground here. Let's get back to what I say every week. Uh, for Monday, November 22nd. Wait a minute, November 22nd, this is a uh, important day in the history of America. This is, uh, what is this? This is the 1963, this is the 47th anniversary of the whacking of President John F. Kennedy, right? Because he was the first guy who started printing money outside the Federal Reserve, printing out some fucking coins. And they weren't having that shit, so they fucking whacked him in Dallas. 
and then to send a message to every fucking president who came after him, they put his head on the fucking silver dollar. You know, not in honor of him. That's the Federal Reserve's way. It's like when you shoot a deer and you put its head on the wall. That's what the Federal Reserve does. When you fuck with them, they blow your brains out and then they stick your head on a coin. You know, but if you play by the fucking rules, they stick you on some paper. That's how it works. That's my theory. And I'm, I'm going with that. Yeah, 47 years ago to this day. And they haven't changed anything in Dealey Plaza in Dallas. If you ever go there and you want to see the creepiest tourist attraction of all time, they have not even changed a post office box. You walk there, it's like stepping back in time. You can walk around with audio. I know I've talked about this before, but for uh, for uh, all the mates over there in fucking England, down in Australia, where else? Where else do I have to give shout outs to? Ireland, Scotland, Sweden. All the places I've played over there. I was actually talking to my booker, uh, my booking agent um, last week. I'm putting together another Europe run for 2011. All right, you fucking cunts. Going to be another London, Dublin, Glasgow, Stockholm, Sweden. Maybe I can do a Scandinavian run over there. You know, how great is my fucking life, all right? And for all you European outcasts down under, uh, we're also working on Australia and I know I promised you I was coming there in the fall. I don't know what the fuck happened, but, um, what are you going to do? You, you know, you guys have plenty to do down there, right? ACDC, uh, that guy who threw the phone at those people, Nicole Kidman and her angry forehead and, uh, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber, Justin Bieber is arguably the biggest star to come out of Australia. Since uh, since that guy threw the phone that I could never remember his fucking name. Michael Strahan, by the way, was a football player I was trying to remember. And uh, just to be a cunt, I said Justin Bieber was from Australia. And if you actually got upset and started screaming at whatever the fuck you're listening this, to this podcast on right now, and you actually know where the fuck the person's from, you know, what does that say about you? You know? I'm sick of them talking about the Justin Bieber haircut. Mick Jagger had that fucking haircut on the fucking Ed Sullivan show. You know, back then when he wore ties. All right, what the fuck is going on here? My brain right now is thinking about making up like fucking 12 different categories so I don't have to talk about the same shit. It's getting a little stale. It's getting a little stale for me. Um, yeah, that's something I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about fucking uh, front men in rock music. The best front men of all time. Recently, I've gone on this, this insane Rolling Stone old school kick where uh, I finally downloaded uh, Get Your Yaya's Out, their live uh, concert from uh, uh, Madison Square Garden. It's fucking unbelievable. Then I was on the road when I was in Columbus, and I bought another one just called Ladies and Gentlemen, the Rolling Stones, and they're playing somewhere in Texas. It's just fucking unreal how unbelievable those guys are as a live band. And I was watching Mick Jagger, and I started thinking, because I always left him out of the equation when I was thinking, you know, best front men of all time, and I might have to give it to him. All right? You know, I always argue Brady, Peyton Manning. I think, you know, who do you, who do you like better? You like uh, Freddie Mercury or Mick Jagger? Now, Freddie Mercury is fucking unbelievable as far as how that dude, seriously, turned Wembley Stadium into like a coffee house and had like a, just a sing-along, just him and the crowd, not even the fucking band. He's like sitting down and chilling out like he's, he's, like he's in, in, in his fucking living room. I think as far as charisma and power of voice and just the ability to be five foot one, 102 pounds and strut around the fucking stage and have everybody captivated. I don't know if you can beat Freddie Mercury, but uh, if anybody can, I, I would I would put Mick Jagger right up there. Go watch some of his live shit. He's he's fucking ridiculous. How, how What an amazing front man that guy is. He did rip off some shit. I saw him when he was, um, what is that song? Uh, the Midnight Rambler. You know, you know the whole breakdown part where he's like, well, have you heard about the Boston 
blap. All right, well, he dropped to his knees, milk in the moment, which anybody who's watched music knows he stole that from James Brown. And he also was doing some his version, his fucking English version, you know, of those, those little fucking, you know, the James Brown thing where you fucking – Somehow your feet aren't moving, but they are moving, but you're not taking steps and you're going side to side. He steals a little bit of that. Uh, but as far as white dudes go, you know what I mean? Uh, I th- those would be my top two. And uh, I would listen to either either side of those arguments. So uh, br- bring them on. I want to hear what you, have to get, what, what you have to say. David Lee Roth, you know, as far as like heavy metal goes, how do you find a guy, you know? Robert Plant. Although I got to say, Robert Plant, you know, the one thing that knocks him down a little bit is uh, when he wasn't stealing lyrics from old blues guys, he was singing about Dungeons and Dragons before it came out. <laughs> so his shit, I don't know if it uh, if it holds. There's certain, certain bands, it's weird. Like the music holds up, but sometimes the lyrics, like I was listening to some old Metallica the other day and as fucking awesome as they are some of their old lyrics really has a Keanu Reeves you know flavor to it you know the thing that shouldn't be whoa what is is that seek and destroy it's all destruction sounds like a 12 year old wrote it am I really criticizing Metallica on a week when I should be giving thanks that those guys fucking blew my eardrums out for 30 fucking years. I'm sorry. You know what? This is my deal. I figured out the other day I have taken 24 flights, 24 different flights. This is the life of a touring comedian. Since the beginning of October, I basically, let's see, I flew from L.A. to Boston, Boston to Minneapolis, Minneapolis to Chicago, Chicago to L.A., Then I flew L.A. to Chicago, Chicago to Albany, drove to Buffalo, and then I went Buffalo, Chicago, Chicago, L.A. I've already lost count how many of those are. L.A. to St. Louis, St. Louis, L.A. L.A. to Dallas, Dallas to Columbus, Columbus to Dallas, Dallas to L.A. Where the fuck did I go after that? Oh, in between there, uh, fucking L.A. to New York, New York back to L.A., and then this past weekend, I went fucking L.A. to Newark, New Jersey, drove to Pennsylvania, did a college gig, drove back to New York, picked up Joe DeRosa over there, drove down to D.C., did a gig down there, went to the airport, got on a fucking puddle jumper, flew to Hartford, got in a rental car, drove out to Foxwoods, did a gig there. Drove from Foxwoods back down to Newark, got on a fucking plane, and flew all the way to L.A. I've done all of that since the first weekend in uh, New York. And would you believe it? I threw my fucking back out. That's what ends up happening when you fly on planes and shit. You're just sitting there like you're on fucking punishment. And I fucked up my, I don't know, my back got tight. The other day I, I, uh, I, I threw out my back. And it's still fucked up. I don't know what the hell to do about it, you know? Not only do I not know what to do about my back, I don't know what to do about this podcast right now because I don't know what happened. It was starting off great. I sang you a little fucking song. I put an echo effect on it. Um, you know what? Let, let's talk uh, Let's talk a little fucking NFL football. I didn't watch any NFL football yesterday because I was traveling. I missed it all. I did sit down and I watched the Patriots um, – the Patriots game, and a lot of people sent me emails, and they were anticipating that I was going to trash Peyton Manning. All right, and I think it's time. I have to. I have to 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 fucking reemphasize my mission statement. All right, somewhere in all this shit, defending Tom Brady, people think that I hate Peyton Manning. The same way people really think that I fucking hate the Jets. I'm going to get to both of those. All right, Peyton Manning. The shit I gave him was how they were calling him the greatest QB of all time. That's where I give him shit. I give him shit about that, and I give him shit about his performance, his playoff record. That's what I do. But I don't think he sucks as a quarterback. I just take offense when somebody says that he's the greatest quarterback of all time and that Tom Brady always takes a fucking backseat to him. That's what I don't like. Despite 
Tom Brady's playoff record, Tom Brady's winning percentage is right there with Peyton Manning. He's, he does better in the fucking playoffs, and their head-to-head matchups, he's, he's fucking killing the guy. So, but I, you know, I still understand that Peyton puts up these monster numbers, but how about every once in a while you have a debate about Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, and it's sort of like maybe six people like Peyton, seven people like Tom Brady. Just, you know, 50-50 maybe tips Tom Brady's way every fucking once in a while. It just doesn't happen. So yesterday, the Patriots beat the Colts or hung on to beat the Colts, which is why I'm not going to talk shit, all right? Unlike these fucking Jets fans who keep winning in the last second against fucking, you know, teams that aren't going to make the playoffs, um, you know, and then they, they start sending me emails like they just won a playoff game, which I really don't understand, which I kind of get because they don't do well in the playoffs for my entire life. So I guess these are victories. So I guess that's why you talk shit. I have no fucking idea. But, you know, Peyton Manning yesterday, it's not like we beat the Colts. You know, that's not the the fucking Marvin Harris, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark, and all those guys. You know what I mean? I know Reggie Wayne played, but come on. It's like they're they have a ton of injuries and their defense sucks. All right. But on the other side of the ball, uh, we have two rookie tight ends that our, our offense seems to be built around, and we, we're starting like three, four rookies on defense. So we're both sort of uh, – it's weird. I think both of those teams and their records are a testament to how fucking good both of those quarterbacks are. And certainly with the Patriots, what a great coach Bill Belichick is. All right? All you fucking cunts who keep telling me, you know, keep trashing Bill Belichick. You know, these guys are still giving me shit on the Internet about that Spygate fucking horseshit. Let me see if I can put this thing to bed. First of all, Mangini, Mangenius, as the Jets call them, Jet fans, of course. Sanchez, Mangenius, Richard Todd's the next Joe Namath. You know how they do that shit down there, right? Um, he, he coached with the Patriots. So evidently, if Bill, if Bill Belichick was doing that all the time, he built his fucking resume, and he has a job right now in head coaching because of that Spygate shit. And then he turns around and rats out Bill Belichick. And then I've also told all you cunts out there that Bill Belichick is not the only guy who does that shit. They send out a league-wide memo telling everyone to stop doing it. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me that everybody does it, watch when head coaches talk to each other on the sidelines on NFL Sunday, do you notice that they put their hands up over their mouth or they take their, their fucking, you know, that little, yeah, that sheet that they have all their plays on and they put it up over their fucking mouth? They put their hand up over their mouth like fucking uh, Joe Pesci in Casino when they're out there in the parking lot. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? All you guys who are trying to blame that fucking epidemic of a crime on one guy. Why do you think they do that? Do you think it's because they have bad breath? You fucking morons. It's because not only does everybody do it, they're still doing it. You just can't do it from the sidelines. They got people up in the booth, binoculars. They got fuck. I bet they got people in the crowd with cameras, with zoom lenses. There's millions of dollars at stake. There's egos at stake, all right? I, I just love how people, okay, people are going to do fucking roids, take HGH. They're going to fucking cheat when, when the fucking refs aren't going to look. But, you know, they're not going to still continue to, 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 to videotape. When that technology exists, give me a fucking break, all right? And if any of you cunts out there who always bitch says that Bella cheat shit, if you can explain to me why they're covering up their fucking – their hand over their mouth, and if one of you dumb fucks tries to tell me that someone on the other sideline with the naked eye can look through 22 players and read the lips of somebody, I am going to find out where you live through uh, something somethingsomething.com, and I'm going to slap you with this fucking microphone. All right? So there you go. I actually, I, I can't believe what says, I actually felt bad for Peyton Manning uh, that game. He played a great fucking game. He did all the fucking work, okay? I can't talk shit. Th- that game was tied up, okay? Vin- Vinatieri comes in, kicks the fucking field goal, all right? This isn't like last year 
where he had all his fucking weapons. It was the Joe Montana moment. And the reason why I trashed him, because they were already handing him the crown as the greatest quarterback of all fucking time before he'd even won his second ring. So I felt vindicated. So I actually felt bad for the guy when he's running off the fucking field. Uh, and believe me, I, I, I couldn't believe it, but I actually did. I was like, ah, you know, guy played a great fucking game. You know, he, he doesn't have any of his weapons. He's still hung in there. And, uh, you know, and I can't talk shit about the Patriots because our defense is, is it's just, I mean, it's, it's aged me 30 years. I just watched the replay of the game, and I'm so fucking glad I wasn't watching that live. Uh, we're great. First down and second down, but third down, yeesh. Jesus Christ. It's, uh, we're still, uh, I, I, you know, I would say two years away, but because we have Bill Belichick, I would say we're still a year away. But I just don't see us going deep into the playoffs with that fucking defense. And, um, and I still don't think we match up well against the Jets because they have a, they have a really, really good defense. So I think that can neutralize our offense. And then they go out there. They have a great offensive line. And I, uh, Sanchez has too much fucking time. I don't know. But I, 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 don't, I don't see them kicking the shit out of us. I mean, we could obviously still win that game in New England. but um, Which I actually have a feeling we're going to. Because that's just how things kind of seem to work out in the NFL. But, like, you know, I don't know. I, I, I honestly I honestly can't talk shit about that game. It was a fucking awesome game. And, uh, and I got to admit, it was a little sad watching Brady and Peyton Manning with with teams that weren't as good as back in the fucking day, you know? But I, I'm hoping that they're both coming around because uh, it's a fucking great matchup. There you go. Look at that. Look at me. The week of Thanksgiving. Not being a cunt. And uh, let's see here. I, for some reason, I have the Jets down here. The Jets. Somebody said, uh, Bill, in two weeks we beat. Oh, okay, here we go. It says, Bill, in two weeks we beat two of the best NFL teams, the Steelers and the Colts. Uh, see, that's another thing. Uh, the Colts aren't one of the best teams. They they have one of the best quarterbacks, and you're thinking about Colts teams of the past. You can't see they, say they're one of the best teams when all their guys are hurt, you know? But anyways, he says, I think that is nothing compared to the – but however, I think that's nothing compared to the accomplishments of the New York Jets. I praise Rex Ryan, Mark Sanchez, and the whole Jet organization for continuing to barely be able to beat under 500 teams. I mean, the Lions, the Browns, and now the Texans? Why even wait? Might as well build the Mark Sanchez statue right now. Fuck the Jets. <laughs> um yeah, and there's another reason I can't talk shit because the Browns raped us. So uh, this is the thing. I've been breaking the Jets' balls about winning last second every fucking week. But, you know, once you do it six weeks in a row, I mean, you can't ignore that that does say something about your fucking team. So uh, and after last week when I went one and three with my gambling, you know, and I couldn't pick a fucking winner, um, I got to admit, man, this, this year has been really uh, – it's kind of fucking awesome, but it's really hard as a gambler trying to pick, you know, like what team is just going to step out and just be the fucking team, you know? I mean, Jet fans, for as much as you guys keep winning, I mean, how, how much are you aging down there in fucking New Jersey with the Jersey Jets there, huh? It's fucking got to be brutal for you every week. But uh, this week I actually, I've, I've gone two and one, and uh, I have to bring this up here. Paul Verzi, and I want you guys to give him shit, too, on his Facebook page. Don't be overly mean. Just actually, you know what would really be funny? If you guys all just sent him letters of condolences, and you just hope that he's doing all right, and if he needs anything, you're there for him. Just just go with that angle, um, because he did the unthinkable, the unprecedented last week, okay? We, we picked four games each week against the spread, and against... I don't know how, how many odds, I don't know how many odds were stacked up against this man, but Paul Verzi went 0 and 4 last week. <laughs> he fucking would have been better off if you blindfolded him, spun him around three times, and gave him a handful of darts, and there was teams written on the wall, and just said, start throwing. I broke his balls a little bit. I was like, Jesus Christ, I don't even think Nia could do that. <laughs> 
Oh, so if you have time, go to Paul Verzi on Facebook, V-I-R-Z-I. Don't be a cunt because it's the week of Thanksgiving. Just just send him letters of condolences. Just act. Treat him as though a family member just passed, you know, or maybe like a family pet, you know. Not a young family member, like, you know, somebody like, like a grandfather that lived, you know, was 97 and died. You know, those weird things where it's like, you know. You guys, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss, but, you know, the fuck? He lived to be 97, the lucky son of a bitch. Um, oh, and fucking four. I mean, I almost did it last week, one and three. But that's the thing about going 0 oh and four. I mean, it's, it's, it's like going 0 oh and 16 in the NFL. Somebody, it, somebody is, is going to come around and do you a favor, right? So tonight, the last game I have, and this is just like that Seahawks game last week when I picked Arizona. And the second I picked Arizona, I'm like, no, dude, pick the Seahawks. And I was like, no, stick with your first choice. For some stupid fucking reason, I took Denver in the points tonight. And uh, I just really can see Phillip Rivers coming out there with a fucking vengeance. You know? Oh, I got to give a shout out to one of my listeners who I didn't even see the email. But he gave me five picks for this week. And he went four and one against the spread. So uh, hats off to you, sir. You are a, uh, you're a better man than me. Um, all right, let's move on here. Let's get on with the, uh, oh, my drinking. People are asking me about my drinking or the lack thereof. Uh, yes, this is my 37th day of sobriety. I got this shit down. I got it down. I'm going to, um, I'm easily going to make it to the Rose Bowl because, uh, I've already, I've already gone through my, my tough drinking towns. I went to DC. I went through New York. I worked with Joe DeRosa. Chicago, Minneapolis. What the fuck else are you going to do up there? Um, oh, by the way, I saw, I saw that show Man vs. Food. And that was a show that I used to make fun of. I thought it was fucking stupid. And uh, I was just like, ah, this is dumb. I don't want to watch this fucking sweaty guy eat all this goddamn food. And I don't know what happened. I was on the road, and I, I watched him. I don't know where he was, but he fucking uh, – he, he he ate this sandwich. It was a, he had to eat a turkey sandwich that I swear to God was the size of a purse. It was stacked that fucking high. It was ridiculous. And then it came with a shake that you could literally put – you could like – you know people who like have like a, like a tree growing in their house? You know how big that fucking pot is? That, that, that was all sh- – it was four pounds of milkshake. So the dude – Eats all but two bites of the turkey sandwich. He sucks down this shake that looked like you, you, you fucking. It was as big as a fire hydrant worth of fucking milkshake. He sucks this whole fucking thing down. Right? He's got 20 minutes to go to eat the final two fucking bites. And he's just sitting there with like, he, he, you know, like the thinker, you know, that pose, that great statue. He's sitting there like that, except he's sweating. And it took him 17 minutes to eat two bites. I mean, I could have stuck both bites in my mouth and, and ate them in like 30 seconds. That's how fucking full this guy was and how hard he had to concentrate to not just fucking blow chow right after he fuck a oh, blow chow. Jesus Christ, that's from my high school days. Dude, you hear about Eddie? Yeah, he's drinking. He fucking blew chow last night, kid. Um, trying not to fucking puke. But anyways, he went to uh, he went to Minneapolis, and uh, he there was some sort of sandwich up there that two places claim. What the fuck was the sandwich? Two places claim that they are the original. Could somebody please tell me what that place is? What the name of that place is? I want to fucking go there because I want to try that sandwich because it looked delicious. And for that matter, if you see uh, a city that I'm going to. If I'm coming to your city and there's that fucking place where you got to go, like when I went to Buffalo and they had Anchor Bar and uh, was it Duffy's or something like that? Like those are the two places to get, you know, they basically invented Buffalo wings. If you know of any of those places, please let me know because I'm really running out of fucking sporting events to go to, you know, unless I want to start to go into like, you know, Little League games and stand there like a fucking pervert. <laughs> I'll just show up with those black frame glasses standing, you know, 
close enough to, to the field, but just far enough away from the rest of the crowd, to, you know, all by myself, just looking like a fucking creep. Um, please let me know those because um, I got to tell you, you know, I'm, I'm having a fucking I'm having more goddamn fun on the road right now. I'm just meeting a lot of, you know, I'm finally getting to do some theaters. Uh, I'm having great shows. You know, I feel like I got my new hour is starting to get solid. And uh, I don't know. I'm not boozing, so I'm kind of doing other shit, checking out some restaurants and whatnot. So if you know of the, some of those places, please let me know. All right. And with that, let's get on with the drinking question. Uh, hey, Bill. So now that you have 30 plus days, 37, 30 plus days without any booze in you, what are the pros and cons? I remember when you were going, when you were on the wagon earlier this year, you said something to the effect of it being a little boring and you remembered every second of every day. I'm really interested to hear what the pros are in your opinion. Uh, do you feel more energetic, clear-minded, etc.? By the way, are you a little squeamish too about Frankenstein Man what Frankenstein Manning is going to do to the Pats secondary tomorrow? Go Pats. Yeah, see? Yeah. True Patriot fans were fucking nervous. Uh yeah, I was. I was nervous. Um the only thing I was counting on was the fact that he wasn't coming in with the Colt team that you were used to. But anyways, back to the drinking questions. Uh what are the pros and cons? All right, let's go with the cons first because those are funnier. The cons are, uh, you know what the hardest part about not drinking is? Is you, you, you'll you never realize how much you are bombarded with beer commercials until you stop drinking. And it's not the dumb beer commercials, you know, the ones like the Corona ones where it's the battle of the sexes. Or those ones where they, you know, they're just trying to be funny, where they're just like, uh, yeah, you know, why don't you order a real beer when, you know, when you take your skirt off or whatever, you know? Those are just silly. Or those fucking Budweiser frogs and lizards back in the day. Those ones don't make you want to drink. But those ones where they talk about the clean, refreshing, you know, and they, the, you know, with the, those fucking Sam Adams commercials where the guy with the beard is burying his face into all those hops. And then they just they just pour in the fucking beer into that perfect beer glass. Those are the ones where I start fucking, you know, I start getting all clammy. Like, uh, you know, and it's weird when you're not drinking. Because if I'm drinking and I see one of those, I'll just, I'll either not even notice it or I'll just be like, God damn, I want a beer and I'll go get one. But when I'm going cold turkey, when I see those commercials, I'm like, God damn, I would like about 56 of those right about now. I would like to man versus booze. <laughs> oh, fuck. There's a YouTube video. Don't do it. I don't condone it. But if you do it, I'm going to watch it. The health risks are unbelievably uh, dangerous. Do not do that. Do not. That's, you can't do man versus booze. Somebody's going to fucking die, uh, which is why they don't have any of those challenges in a bar. So strike all of that. Do not do that. But that's, that's what those beer commercials make me want to do. Man versus booze. And it makes me want to sit there and, uh, oh, God, how, what a fun challenge that would be. Can you imagine if you had, like, you know, you know like those, uh, this is how much I want to drink right now. You know, you know those, uh, you know those, those refrigerators that you, that people keep wine bottles in? Wine, 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 wine fridges, refrigerator wine things. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Whatever the fuck you call those things. You know, they have the glass door so you can see. You can see the bottles chilling in there. Imagine if you had a fucking ceiling to floor. Just like a refrigerator that had a glass door and behind it you just saw a bunch of frosty fucking bottles of beer, you know? And and on and the other one was just a bunch of frosty fucking awesome looking beer glasses. Right? And you had you had to kill them all. Even if you couldn't fucking do it, the amount of goddamn fun that would be. See, this is why I'm never going to make it. I'm, ne I'm not going to go my whole life because, uh, you know what? I think I might do that with DeRosa when I eventually get off the wagon. We might do man versus booze. What is wrong with me? See, this, this is the cons of going just totally cold turkey is you start having fantasies. Like, I just got lost in that. Jesus Christ. And then I was thinking like, yeah, we'll do it. We'll fucking take a vacation. We'll have a fucking... 
house on the lake like this whole homoerotic fucking beer fantasy with Joe DeRosa. The fuck is wrong with me? That's what I was literally thinking. You know, because when you do something like that, you want to make sure you got no place else to go. Okay, that's one of the cons. You start fantasizing about booze so much, you actually put yourself in a semi-gay situation with one of your best friends. <laughs> ah, God damn it. One of the things I love most about Joe DeRosa is he's a complete fuck-up. That's what I love about him. You know, there's nothing better than hanging out with a fuck-up. It's, it's because, you know, it's, there's no pressure for you to get your shit together. It's like when you hang out with a do-gooder, gooder, it's a constant reminder of, of, of how awful you are as a person and how shitty you're living your life. But when you hang out with a guy like Joe DeRosa, you know, he's smart about it. He gets his work done. He finishes writing the script. He does his shows, but afterwards, he's old school. He really is. He's like Dean Martin without the charisma and the good looks. Um, anyways, why am I trashing Joe on Thanksgiving? Huh? It's a week to give thanks. I give thanks to that, you know, that Joe DeRosa. And for years, us comedians have always trashed Joe's, Joe DeRosa, talking about how he doesn't have any shoulders. And I have maintained for a good two and a half years, I've been screaming. I've been telling to, to, to people with deaf, yelling at deaf ears. What's that fucking expression? Whatever. I'm talking to people who are not listening to me. Joe DeRosa does not lack shoulders. He has shoulders. But what he doesn't have is that those two chunks of flesh, you know, the chunk of flesh on either side of your neck. Uh, uh, either, yeah, between your neck and your shoulder, that, that meat right there, the trapeze muscle, is that what it is? He doesn't have that. He doesn't have collarbones. That's what happened. His collarbones never grew while the rest of his skeletal system grew. His collarbones didn't, so uh, hence there was no need to put flesh in there. So Joe is a head, he's a neck, and on either side of his neck, he had his ball and socket joints for his shoulders are right where those those rivets were on the side of Frankenstein's necks. Neck, necks, plural. What am I, idiot? All right, let's plow ahead here. 36 minutes in. So those are the cons. As you start fantasizing about booze, and uh, for me anyways, I can't speak of, of for uh, anybody else, but it just makes you want to drink like 90 fucking beers. Like th there's a bar, there's a German bar on the Upper East Side. And this time when I, when I go off the wagon, this is where I want to go. They have this insane, I can't remember if it's a boot. Or if it's one of those things, those beer glasses that looks like a giant fucking bong. Um, you know, like, I, 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 that's what I want to drink. I want to drink one of those. Or just one of those giant mugs of fucking beer. That's the con right now. Because as great as I feel, that's what I think of in my head. When I think about drinking every day, the glass gets bigger, frostier, and... Uh, uh, Jesus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start drinking halfway through this podcast if I keep talking about it. All right, uh, what are the pros? Weight loss, specifically in your face. It, you, your, your face tightens up. It's great. You get your jawline back. Um, when some drunk whore comes up to you with fucking cigarettes and wine breath, you see her for what she is. All right, you don't hang out with people after the show. They get all drunk and fucking loud. And what you end up, you're standing there, and what you really start hearing is these cliched conversations that you have participated in for the last 25 fucking years of your life. You know, you stand back and you get to watch people slowly lose control of their, uh, their judgment. Um, and you start to see people say things and uh, do things that they're going to apologize or regret for. Regret for or regret the next day. Um, what else? Uh, it starts to make you look at where you are in your life. You know? And uh, I don't know. If you're going to do something that's sort of scummy, you have to do it stone sober. And I think a lot of times when I do dirtbag shit, you know, or I just do dumb shit. I, I think it's because I'm drunk. No, I think that's why I'm drinking. It's because I'm shouting down that voice in my head that's telling me, Bill, go to bed right now. Just go to bed, read, you know, 
finish that script. That's another thing, too, as I start drinking, when I start thinking of the sketch I was going to write or something like that, and I haven't done it. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And I start thinking, you know, the successful guys would be at going back to the hotel room right now, and they'd be finishing it, right? Take out a little fucking feather, you know, stick it in that ink well, and they, they would finish writing it out. But not you. Here you are. You're sitting here talking to these fucking people about football from the 1970s. So um, there's plenty of pros about it. You know, I think if you're in a fucked up relationship and you sober up, that'll help you. You know, I think uh, I think a lot of people kind of use booze as a way to sort of medicate their way through the year. You know, and not address shit that's really pissing them off and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. It makes you want to work out. It makes you want to change other stuff in your life where uh, – and actually go out and do things. It's another thing, too. See? Now I'm talking about going to cities. I want to go to cool places to eat and that type of stuff. And rather than, you know, where are the bars at? So I can do what I've already done for the last 25 fucking years. So there you go. Those are the pros. Um, I'm not saying you got to quit it for good. Unless you're a full-on alcoholic, obviously I would quit it for good. But if, uh, you know, if you're just getting that big Ted Kennedy head, it's great to take a fucking month off. You know? I don't know. That's it. I don't know about you guys, but I've just been boring the living shit out of myself this week. All right. Let's get to underrated, overrated. All right. This is this is going to cause some fucking emails. All right. Overrated. Reverse racism. I love how white men tell minorities to quit whining about how unfair things are. But the second they become victims of racism, all you hear is I can't insert complaint because I'm white. Uh, take some of your own advice. Take some of your own advice, you fucking hypocrite. Could I have butchered that anymore? Let me go back and read that. Reverse racism. I love how white men tell minorities to quit whining about how unfair things are. But the second they become victims of racism, all you hear is, I can't insert complaint because I'm white. Take some of your own advice, you fucking hypocrite. There's the read. (laughs) I fucking love that one. I 100% agree with that one. I, it's embarrassing when I hear white guys, specifically white guys, you know, white women still complain because that's what women do of all colors. They just fucking bitch. They're going to bitch about something, you know, take them to the restaurant that they've always wanted to go to. You take them there. And what happens? Why do we have to sit over here? Right. Bitch about the table. It's cold. I like it, but it's cold. Do you have the fucking blah, blah, blah? Do you have that special? And they take it off the menu there, and then they pout. And what do you want to do? You, you want to fucking take the check when it comes and stuff it down the back of their throat like that creepy moth that Hannibal Lecter or that, or that one fucking dude used to do in, in that movie that I can't remember the name of. Jesus Christ, this podcast sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really, I you know. I really can't, like, listening to white people bitch about, uh, white guys bitch about, you know, like affirmative action when they bitch about that type of shit. All I can say is if you can't keep your fucking head above the line, you know, come on. Really? If you fall, you know, do you know how much you have to be fucking up as a white dude to to get under that fucking line? Like, say, colleges, when they have that affirmative action thing, so then somebody uh, gets the same scores as you, but they're not white, so they fucking get in, and you're going to sit there and bitch moan and come, come on. Seriously, come on. You, you, you got enough fucking advantages. You fucked up on You got to take that one on the chin. That's how I view it. And so I'm going to support that one because I know it's also going to bring a bunch of fucking emails. We can talk about race on the podcast, something I would love to do. All right, underrated. Michael Vick. Love him or hate him, he's the best QB in the league right now. Classic, classic, classic. You see that right there? There you go. This is what, this is, that is the ESPN way of looking at football. Did you watch Michael Vick last week against the hapless fucking Washington Redskins and their awful defense? You would have thought Jesus Christ himself was playing fucking quarterback. They would, they could, they said, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever, Michael Vick, is, Michael Vick, and Michael Vick, gee, one fucking game in the middle of November, and this guy is suddenly, he suddenly 
catapults fucking Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, as, as far as, like, all their accomplishments, all the things that they've done, he has, like, two, two or three good fucking games, and right now he is the best QB in the fucking league. Jesus fucking Christ. It's just, it's just fucking unreal. I get it. He's the fastest fucking guy in the NFL. You can't fucking tackle the guy. I get it. He's staying in the pocket now, and he's actually doing what a quarterback is supposed to be doing. You know, when the first guy isn't open, he doesn't take off and run anymore. He looks for the second or third, third guy open. I get that shit. All right? And I'm not saying, like, somebody asked me last week when he was doing what he did against the Redskins. He said, do you think this makes Michael Vick the best quarterback in the league? I said, look, if he does what he did tonight against the fucking Redskins, like three weeks in a row, he becomes, without a doubt, shoulder to shoulder with the best QBs in the fucking league. Okay? But you got to win in January. You got to lead your team in the fucking playoffs. Or else it doesn't mean sh- I mean, yeah, it's amazing. The guy's fucking, he's the most athletic dude I have ever seen. He's got an unbelievable army fleet. He has all the, I'll tell you this, he has all the fucking tools to become the greatest fucking QB of all time. If, if, if he actually starts to play the position where he stays in the pocket and does that without a fucking doubt. But no, he's not the best QB in the fucking league right now. He, he's not. He's the most fucking amazing to watch. I, I don't know. This, this is, look at. This gets back to me when people think I hate the fucking Jets. This is what I hate. I hate people who get crowned king before they take the fucking crown. That's what I can't stand. That's why I went off on Peyton last week. That's why I'm going off on the Jets this year. You guys listen to this podcast for three fucking years. I've made fun of the Jets and that type of shit, but it hasn't been like this year. And the reason was was because that hard knock shit talking that they did was the most over-the-top disrespectful fucking thing I've seen. And so God did yeah, and fucking Rex Ryan. Yeah, we'll go undefeated in September. We're going to kick the fuck out of them. We'll kick the shit out of those fucking guys, fucking guy. And everybody's talking about how confident the, confident the guy was. And I called him out on it. And you know what? I was fucking right. I was right. They weren't that fucking good. And they still aren't that fucking good. They are winning games at the last second. They lost their first fucking game. They lost to the Ravens and they lost to the Packers. They've yet to play the Colts which uh, they're not really that good this year, but they haven't played the fucking Steelers. They haven't blown anybody away other than the fucking Patriots with their awful fucking defense. So where do you get off talking all this shit? That's why I'm giving them shit, okay? I really don't give a fuck. You know, I give a fuck this year if they win the Super Bowl, but I don't don't wish that fucking misery on Jets fans. Do you really think I want you guys to go your whole lifetime and never win a championship? I don't. I don't. All right. But this year, I don't want you to because you talked all that. You guys didn't talk all that shit because Rex Ryan talked all that shit. That's all this shit is about. All right. But other than that, I don't give a fuck. It's fun that they're good. It's not fun when they suck. That game against the Colts yesterday wasn't fun because what's his because because Peyton Manning didn't have all his guys. It's not you know what I mean? It'd be like beating the Yankees if uh, well, Jesus, their whole fucking team would have to go down the amount of fucking free agents they sign. Um, It'd be like beating the, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. You you know what the fuck I'm saying, all right? So don't don't get like this whole thing, you know, switch. I know I'd say over-the-top shit, but I'm just trying to be funny here, all right? So all you cunts who are taking this shit way too fucking seriously. Speaking of which, I got some audio for you guys that uh, one of my great listeners sent in to me. And I absolutely love this fucking audio. But it's also embarrassing to me. Because this guy reminds me, I hate how much I am just like this guy. I hate that I give a fuck about sports as much as this guy. Uh, Speaking of the Eagles and the Redskins. Okay, for my friends overseas, either way, uh, uh, there was a football game. Eagles played the Redskins, and the Eagles fucking raped the Redskins. So this this radio host goes on the radio and has a 12-minute fucking meltdown about all the shit he's had to endure as a Redskins fan, which is kind of funny because they've won three Super Bowls in my lifetime. So I, I part of it is hilarious because he goes, you know, it's been 10 years of this shit. 
And I, I just would love to see him do that rant and get to that that moment and say it's been 10 years of this shit and say that standing on in, in the middle of Wrigley Field when it's packed. <laughs> it's been 10 years of this shit. Oh, you poor fucking baby. Um, but it's actually, to be honest, it's been longer than that because, you know, it's they're going on like 20 years. And once you get you start getting up around 20 years, it sucks as a fan. Um, just talk to the Canadian fans up there. You know, it's starting to suck up there, isn't it? You guys got to be you guys got to be happy. The Canadians look really good this year. They have a really solid fucking team. But the fact that the Canadians haven't won it since 1993, this is how unbelievable that franchise is. They've never gone this long in the history of that of that franchise. They've never gone anywhere near this long without winning a Stanley Cup. Those fucking assholes, I think right up until 1979, I think they had a better winning percentage than I think the Yankees. I might be wrong on that. No, I think I'm. Uh, I might. I think I'm right on that. I think they were averaging winning one every fucking three, one every three years, easily. Ah, the fuck knows. I'm bad at math. But anyways, so anyways, this, um, just go to the mmpodcast.com. This fucking rant is so funny, and and. First of all, somebody sent the email and told me that this guy was going to go off. And what makes it so goddamn funny is the way he starts the rant. I thought it was just going to be some guy blowing a gasket, but it starts the he starts it so calmly. He just starts off saying something to the effect of, you know, my grandfather was a Redskins fan. He used to watch Sammy Baugh. <laughs> He goes to his dad. He literally did background. My dad was a Redskins fan. I've been a Redskins fan. I probably spent in my lifetime probably, I don't know, seven, $8,000 on throwback jerseys and Redskins merchandise. He lays the fucking groundwork. He gives you the fucking backstory. And then he just launches into this thing. And I got to admit, man, I got 10 minutes into it. I just shut it off because I was so embarrassed that I have – I've blown a gasket like this guy. I mean, I, he gets like seven minutes into it, and I, I'm like talking to the guy like, dude, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter this much. Just let it go. And it's actually really funny, except for this this guy in the background keeps going, get him. Get him. Get him. And it really gets fucking annoying. Other than that, it's fucking hilarious. Um, all right. 52 minutes in. Let, let's let's move on here. All right. this This fucking... Segment is really taking off. I'm loving this one. This segment is best line in a bad movie. Uh, and this week's uh, video, which is up on the mmpodcast.com, you got to watch this one. Please do not have any food in your mouth when you watch this because you will spit it all over a loved one. Um, watch the video, Steven Seagal, Blood Bank. Uh, it's just fucking awesome. It, I, I really want to just go out one night and just rent five of the worst fucking movies ever and just sit there and watch it with a couple of people that can appreciate it because some of the lines in these fucking movies are incredible. Please, please keep sending me these videos because it's just making a nice long list of movies that I have to sit down and watch. Um, you know who's great for that, by the way, too? Are you guys fr fans of 30 Rock? And I'm only going to name a name here because this is something positive. Uh, Judah Freelander is an encyclopedia of knowledge on movies in general, but forget about bad movies. And if I remember correctly, he actually collects them. And uh, I have to, you know what? I gotta get, I'm gotta. i going to have him as a guest on this show. And before he comes on, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for his top five worst movies, best worst movies of all time. And I'm telling you, he can break these movies down like Siskel and Ebert back in the fucking day as to why they're great. Not why not only they're awful, but they're also great. Like he's, uh, this is what I, one of the many things I miss about living in New York was running into him. And I would always bring up, you know, it all started one time. I was, I was hanging out at the comedy cellar and he was down there and I was trying to remember this name of this Steven Seagal movie. And I was like, I was like, dude, what was the name of that movie? Uh, Steven Seagal had is one of his earlier ones. And, uh, he, he fought all those, those fucking Bob Marley looking dudes. 
And he, he just goes, without even missing a beat, he just goes, Marked for Death, great movie. And I go, what was the plot of that? He goes, the plot of that movie is basically Steven Seagal beats up Jamaica. <laughs> I'm butchering all this shit. He said it in a much funnier way. And then he then he broke down why that movie was great. And it basically came down to he said that movie introduced the breaking of bones in martial art movies, according to him, or or took it to just an entirely different level. And I'm telling you, if you watch Mark for Death and you're squeamish, uh, that's not a movie to watch because I've never seen so many compound fractures. Is that the compound fracture? Is that the one where, where it, it comes out through the skin? That's the one I'm talking about. All right. And once again, I start talking and I get in over my head. This has been the easy listening podcast. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, YouTube videos for the week. I can't remember if I uh, put this one up last week, but uh, look up the car, James Brolin. It's a uh, one of the worst and hilarious trailers I've ever seen in my life. This is another movie that I have to see. Uh, White Line Fever. Is another one. Those are two bad movie trailers. Um, Angry Birds Peace Treaty. And uh, and here's another segment I'm going to introduce. If you guys have all-time favorite classic YouTube videos, all right, look up Food Fight. And uh, try to guess which wars that they're uh, talking about. I'm a moron. The first time I watched it and just thought it was funny because it was food blowing each other up. And then I really started to see the... Uh, the metaphors, or was it the similes? I never. Simile is using like her abs. Well, then they would have to say America is a cheeseburger. That's a metaphor. A simile would be America is like a cheeseburger. All right, you'll understand it when you watch the video if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, as far as drummers goes this week, this is another S Stuart Copeland one. And this is a band that I meant to get into, and I don't know what happened. I got so busy, but uh, Oysterhead. Uh, watch the YouTube video, Oz is Ever Floating. Uh, it was a performance that they did live on Conan O'Brien, and the band was Stuart Copeland on drums. Um, what's his face? I just went, I just spaced on his fucking name. Trey, uh, the guy from Fish. I forget his fucking name. Anastasio, I was never a big Fish fan. Um, I think they're awesome, but I just can't listen to fucking 58 minute songs. And, uh, on bass was Les Claypool. That was the band and they're fucking awesome. And I'm going to download some of their shit. All right. And with that, I think the only thing we have left, I'm going to end with advice, which really seems to be the way that we end. Do I have time for a couple quick questions? I don't think I do. All right. Let's get to the advice for the week. All right. Question. Bill, being a frequent flyer. Don't you uh, think this controversy over the new body scanners is fucking bullshit? Uh, a guy hit a bomb in his fucking underwear. What exactly do these complaining bastards expect us to scale back on security? We have become so pampered and used to the utmost comfort that we are doing the terrorist job for them. Who gives a fuck if someone is seeing your cock or your tits? He or she is seeing hundreds a day. Uh, you, sir, are a fucking moron, all right? If you go through airport security, I don't know if you've noticed, they're not exactly the fucking Navy SEALs, although they have gotten better in the last couple of years. But they don't, you know, they're always shooting the shit. They're always fucking around. They're not really paying attention. It doesn't really look like it's a high-paying fucking job. All right, let's go with that. All right, let's go with secondly... Uh, a body scanner, entire body scanner. Let's get over the fact that you don't want a naked picture of yourself, which is your fucking right to not want that, by the way. All right? Secondly, I don't know about you, but I fly every other weekend, and when I go on benders like this at the end of the year because I owe the banker cunts and the fucking government a bunch of money, I go on like, you know, four or five weeks in a row. I fly. All right? So I got to get a full-blown body scan uh, on the way out and the way back. You know, I really have to start checking to see that I'm not going to be completely filled up with memory on this fucking Olympus LS10. They have the goddamn time right there. I apologize. Let me get back to what the fuck I was talking about. Um, yeah, so 
So you're basically saying that I shouldn't complain that like six weeks in a fucking row and, and a total of 12 times, I'm going to take radiation from head to fucking toe. All right? And don't even tell me, oh, it's only for a fucking second. Dude, when you go to get your fucking, you know, teeth x-rayed, they put that leather fucking that lead vest leather that lead vest over all your fucking organs and then they go they leave the fucking room and i'm supposed to stand there like i'm at a jay-z concert and i'm getting frisked at the same time with my fucking leg spread and doing that jay-z thing over my head and they're gonna no fuck that this cancer in my family i'm not doing it i'm not doing it pat me down so that's why i did on the on the way out i was like yeah i'm not doing that thing and I said to pat me down. So then, you know, they did it. And they said, and they came up to me and this guy said, uh, I have to pat you down. Uh, are there any parts of your body that are, uh, are, that, are, that are sensitive? And I wanted to be like, well, I think all of us have areas of our body that are sensitive. <laughs> Just to creep them out. I was basically like, no, go ahead, grab my balls. I don't give a fuck, right? I didn't know what he was going to do, right? So he puts on his dishwashing gloves and starts patting me down. And they don't grab your balls. What they do is they go way up your inner thigh, and he, he gives you your ball bag a little of a, a backhand on each side of the ball bag, you know? So, And I got to admit, it made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, you're not taking a fucking head-to-toe naked fucking picture of me as you, you know... I, you're not you're not fucking radiating my entire body so I can get on a fucking puddle jumper to go to Hartford. I'm not doing that. Go fuck yourself. Jesus Christ. Lazy motherfuckers. You know what? What people forget? I, I just don't. I don't get it. You know what I mean? This this. I, I understand that they're you know quote unquote trying to keep me safe. But what I don't understand is that people don't understand that during those times of fear and let's try to keep you safe, the amount of fucking, like, privilege that you lose and you never fucking get it back. And they always take a little more than they should. That's why it's great that people bitch. And it's great that you can bitch because if you bitched like this in China, they'd probably put you to death and then harvest your fucking organs. All right, so, yeah, I think it's fine with the amount of fucking cancer that's out there and that people fucking talk on their cell phones all the goddamn time. You don't want to end it, you know, you don't want to add to it with, with head-to-toe fucking zap of fucking radiation. You know, I'm, I'm standing there. I don't have my fucking shoes on. I'm stripped down to a fucking T-shirt. I got jeans on and shit. I don't have anything on me. You know? And there's all this fucking flipping out about the fucking airplanes. What about trains? You could literally have a box that said, I have dynamite on the side of it, and you could the fucking conductor would help you carry it on. There's no metal detectors. There's no nothing, despite the fact that 15 years ago, that guy got on the Long Island Ra Railroad and shot, and shot the whole fucking thing up. So I don't like that. I don't like that whole fucking I scan, scan my retina shit. No, go fuck yourself. I'm not doing that. And um, it's your right, dude. If you have no problem with it, you know, good luck with your testicular slash brain slash tongue slash throat slash big toe cancer. If you fly all the fucking time like a lot of people, I'm not doing that shit. I'm not fucking doing that. That's, uh, yeah, fuck that. You know, and you're acting like before this shit went down, they haven't been keeping us safe. You know? They have been. Since 9-11, knock on wood, nothing has fucking happened. Before those stupid body scanners, nothing has fucking happened. All right? We're fine. Everything is fucking fine. You don't need those goddamn things. You know what's funny is if next week somebody actually does something, the conspiracy theorists are going to say that the government did it because people were refusing those body scanners. <laughs> All right. That's just my opinion, man. I, I seriously, you know, I'm not trying to get head to toe radiation. I, I get that they're trying to fucking keep me safe. But, you know, if they truly wanted to keep me fucking safe, they wouldn't be shooting the shit and joking the amount of fucking times that they are when I'm going through. 
All right, and that happens a lot. Specifically, it's the person who's looking at the TV screen, is talking about whatever, and is joking and laughing, which you're going to do because they have an unbelievably boring fucking job. I would be doing the same goddamn thing. But if they truly gave a fuck, they would spend a lot more money on the people that they get to do the security rather than these newfangled fucking goddamn machines. I'm not going through those. Pat me down. Give, give my fucking uh, my ball bag a couple of backhands with your dishwashing gloves. I don't give a fuck. But I'm not going to stand there, spread eagle, and end up with cancer or the taint. <laughs> All right? But, you know, if you guys want to do it, go ahead and do it. I don't give a fuck. But I hope enough of you say no so it doesn't become mandatory. All right, that's it. All right, let's get with the advice here. All right. Hey, hey there, Bill. Uh, I need your thoughts on this situation. This girl I hooked up with was a freak. Um, I never banged her. I just fingered her and got her off, and she blew me. Her ass was huge. It was amazing. She texted texted me the next day saying how amazing it was and how crazy she got off and loved it. I thought the next date, our third, was going to be a fun sex fest, no doubt about it, but out of nowhere. She said she didn't want to do this anymore. She was moving down to Irvine, leaving her old apartment that was just a few miles from me, And she said we wouldn't ever hang out again. So she didn't stay in touch. Uh, The one time she she was meeting up with friends in Santa Monica, my neck of the woods, we texted back and forth. And by the end of the night, she flaked again. Well, wait a minute. You said she's not keeping in touch. I guess when she left, she didn't keep in touch. But then she texted you when she came back to town? I'm going to have to assume that because I can't talk to you. All right. Said you were going to meet at the end of the night, and then she flaked again. She said she liked to rendezvous, but, of course, she never did. Then she asked me why I'm obsessed with seeing her. I told her the truth, that I had a fun time with her, and we both had a blast, and she clearly got off, and I figured we could continue this good thing we got going. I didn't directly say I want to fuck her, but the point probably came across in the texting. Uh, I'm straightforward with women, Bill. I'm, I'm also aware of how this girl's... Ben, and he left out a few words, I'm assuming he's saying, been messing with my brain. I even told her I couldn't shake her off. I felt used, but since we didn't fuck, it wasn't a good use. The mission wasn't complete. Hot sex on a platter makes the mission, inc- uh, makes the com- makes the mission complete. Jesus, Bill. Uh, we don't talk anymore. I haven't seen her, and I'm bummed I never banged her. I was hoping you might have some insight as to why she suddenly stopped seeing me. She wasn't faking it. She was really digging me, and suddenly she halted the whole operation before I could bang her. What gives me? Help me out. Please give me some insight. All right, dude. Well, I don't know her, and I, so I can't really break her down that much. Uh, there's a number of reasons why she, she could have done it. All right, you said the girl was a freak. Look, the fact that all she did was bang you, and you're now jonesing for her, and you're saying that she's a freak and everything. Um, and then out of nowhere, she said she didn't want to do this anymore. Is one or two things. That's either A, one of those those girls who fancies themselves a femme fatale. And they like guy, getting guys all worked up. And then just dropping you like a fucking hot potato, you know. Um, just to fuck with your head. There are girls out there that like doing that. Um But if I had to guess, because she actually blew you and did bring you to orgasm, I would say that this sounds like a bad girl trying to reform herself. Or for people who are more liberal, this is a woman who's uh, had her fun and she's realizing that when she begins a relationship the way she did with you, that, uh, that it doesn't go anywhere. But she still loves to fuck and she's fighting that. So she moves away. Maybe she banged so many guys in that area. She needed a she needed a new start. So she's down there in fucking San Diego, wherever the fuck she went. And now she's, you know, she's being that girl. You know, I used to fucking blah, blah, blah. But now I don't. You know, maybe she's looking for a husband. So maybe that's why she did it. I have no fucking idea. Maybe she's lonely down in San Diego. She misses her friend. She comes back. And in a moment of weakness, she texts you. And then she starts crying to her friends going, look, I'm going to hook up with this guy. I don't even like him. And they're just like going, Susan, don't do it. You don't have to do this. You're doing so good right now. You're not being a whore. 
and then she leaves you hanging. But I'll tell you this right now. You got to let her go. You got to let her go. All right. You got to be like when it comes to women, if you're just out there and you want to fuck, you got to be like a relief pitcher. All right. You serve up a fucking meatball and they knock it out of the park. You can't be throwing your next pitch thinking about the last one. You got to let the shit go. Start over again. So right now what you need to do is go out and find another fucking freak, which, you know, if you're straightforward with women like you are, you're going to find one. And if you really just take the time to try to break them down and see what different kinds of women respond to, you literally become like a fisherman. And, you know, whatever kind of woman you're looking for, that's the bait you're tossing out there. All right? If you're looking for a wife or a serious girlfriend, you don't go to a meat market. You know, join a softball league, take a cooking class or something like that. Go where the good girls are. You know? Or if you do go out to the meat market... Look at the one who's actually watching her alcohol intake, the one who seems to be the responsible one. Responsible. A wife, a mother to your children, right? The one who doesn't have her stuff all hanging out. But, you know, if you're looking for a hooah, you know, there's all kinds of places to go. Actually, the great thing about whores is they're everywhere. That's what I love about them, you know? It's like bottled water. You can pretty much get it wherever you go. (laughs) <laughs> no, you know what I mean? You got the office whore. You got the fucking the whore at the gym, you know, the one who shows up in full makeup and fucking, you know, works out on level one on the Stairmaster. Eh, 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 eh. Looking over his shoulder to see who's checking her out, right? But that girl's a fucking nightmare. Even if she blows you, you're going to have makeup all over your lap. <laughs> Here's the funny I finally got to the funny, a fucking hour and 10 minutes into the goddamn podcast. Where was it all week? You know what? The reason why this podcast wasn't as funny as usual is because, you know, I was thinking about all the people who don't get to laugh in the world this week. You know, this week when we're supposed to give thanks. Hey, England and Australia and Sweden. Hey, we'll throw Denmark in there too. What's up there, Ireland? What do you say there, Madagascar? Do you guys have any sort of week like that where you have a big feast? What about the Irish? You guys got to have some big thing that, you know, turns into some sort of drunken brawl. Uh, Jesus Christ, can you go with any more hacky shit? Yeah, let's go to Scotland. And then you put your fucking skirts on, right? You fucking skirt wearing coots. Um, Do you guys have any days like that? Where all you're supposed to do is just sit down and eat, and then there always has to be the Debbie Downer who just sits there and starts talking about the less fortunate, you know, or one of these fucking celebrities who has to do a little public service announcement. You know, during this week of Thanksgiving, let's not forget about those Colombian miners or wherever the fuck they were from. Oh, wait, they got rescued. But still, they were down in that hole for a long time. I like how this is like the one time a year, too, when people all of a sudden go out and they want to feed a homeless guy. You know, I had a buddy of mine did that, and he went down there, and they thought that they were all going to be fucking high-fiving him, and they were actually – they actually got pissed at him. They are like, well, where the fuck are you the other 11 months of the year? He was like, wow, that's a good point. Um, All right, that's the podcast for this week. I want to thank everybody who came out to my shows. Um – at the Lisner Auditorium. I was calling it the Listener. The Lisner Auditorium in uh, Washington, D.C. had an awesome time. And uh, comics at Foxwoods. Uh, If you live in that area, the New England area, you want to do a little bit of gambling and then see some really high-quality comedy, I saw who the fuck they've been booking. they got nothing but uh, big-time acts up there. It's a great place to see a show. Definitely check that out. And this weekend, I'm going to be in Seattle, Washington at the – come on, where the fuck is it? On November 27th, I'm going to be at the Moore Theater. All right, and that's a huge venue, so there are tickets left. So please, when you're done chowing, could you please come out, check out a show? I would, I would love it. I got a brand new hour of stuff. Paul Verzi, Owen Four, Paul Verzi is coming to the show. He's going to be opening up, and we're hanging around an extra day. We're going to go to the uh, Seattle Seahawk Kansas City Chief game on Sunday. Make it a fucking weekend. Hey, and if there's any good places to eat up there, if there's uh, the place that has the best burger or the sandwich or whatever, let me know. Because we're both not boozing and we want to go check out some shit like that. All right? That is the podcast for this week. God bless all of you. Have a happy Thanksgiving. 
If you're not in this country, uh, have a happy fucking Thursday. All right, that's it. Have a great week. Go fuck yourselves.